<laughs> In the old days, people used to get their information from television, radio, newspapers. Well, as we all know, with the advent of the internet, the blogosphere has taken over. We sat down with five amazing women to uncover the secret behind what they do and how did they build their audience and why do they write what they write. And we also got to talk to them about how that affects their family and their faith. First of all, what's the name of your blog? Where are you from? And what's kind of your shtick? You want to start, Allison? Sure, I'm Allison Charnetsky. My blog is called Petite Elephant and I grew up in Orem, Utah. I do lifestyle, home, family, travel, beauty. Okay, Yeah. awesome. Missy Smith with HowDoesShe.com. Also grew up here in Utah, but now live in Boise, Idaho, but there's actually three of us that started the blog together, so. Saw that. She, yeah, Shelly's in Tennessee, and Allison lives here in Utah. Yours is kind of like a little mini Huffington Post, like you have a lot of contributors and. Yes, yeah. we do, and that kind of grew, that evolved. Okay, we're gonna have to talk about that. Hi, I'm Jordan Page. And my blog is funcheaperfree.com, and I'm originally from Oregon, but I guess I'm a Utah now. I live here. Okay. Utah. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jill Neistel, and I have a blog called One Good Thing by Jilly. I'm originally from Southern California, transplant to Utah about 20 years ago. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm Carrie Ann, and our blog, it's actually my husband and I, but I'm just here. So my husband and I run osweetbasil.com. Oh, That's right. We do it together. That's we're kind of interesting. Team. I'm from Washington State and he's from South Carolina. Now we're both in Utah and we've made a living out of eating food, so we're happy. <laughs> I, I like, I would like to do that myself. Yeah, well. So, okay, so you're all mom bloggers, but you said something about not uh, liking. Do you see yeah. us tensing up? Yeah. It's like we, does it bug you too? Oh yeah. yeah. You don't like the label. What, what about that? Uh, mommy blogger. Yeah. It, it's so degrading to start with to have an, male ad guy who's 25 call me a mommy blogger <laughs> there are two people who get to call me mommy and i gave birth to both of them yeah. that's it so what what term of art do you prefer blogger okay yeah okay. i kind of like the influencer yeah tag like influencer. lately that's been using that's been used been using on. yeah i feel like there's a word that's missing like i've actually just kind of declared a detachment from the term blogger because i think it's changed so much over the few years that I've been blogging that I don't know if I associate myself with all the rules of blogging anymore. Yeah. I wish, yeah. we need a term, we need a new term for influencer, blogger, mommy blogger, not so much, but I don't know. We need but I agree, blogger just, just, we just we need encompasses a lot it. more yeah. than just a mom at home. Blogger. Okay, well let me ask you guys this, before we get to that, because that's assuming that everybody knows what this is, right? So how did you get started doing this? I mean. I want to know. I was in a job that wasn't using my creative skill set, mm. which I'd been using before, and I just really needed a creative outlet. I also had recently gone through a battle with addiction, and so I was living one day at a time, that philosophy. Mm. And so I literally was just kind of, it was therapy for me to put one good thing out in the world a day that I could share with other people, and hopefully they would benefit from it, I would benefit from it. And that's really how it got started, with no other preconceived wow. notions of, of how wow. it would turn out. What about you? Uh, we went on a vacation and had a really wonderful time and got really inspired by the food there and came home feeling like we need to get in the kitchen more. And just we discovered that it, it wasn't at all about the food. It was about the hands that created it. It was mm. about us well being together, so. Amazing, okay. Let's. Mine is a little different in that my family, well, my husband and I, when we were first married, we, we went through a tough financial time. I couldn't find anyone online that I related to. There are a lot of finance gurus out there, but I'm like, how do I shop at Target? Like, I don't wanna know how to pay cash for a house. I wanna know <laughs> how to afford, right. like, formula and a cute shirt once in a while. That's all I'm asking. At first, I started blogging about things I thought I was supposed to blog about, deals and coupons and things that were really hot. One day, I just, I was like, forget it. I'm just gonna throw me in there. And that's really when it took off. I love these stories. I was a photographer and Allison has a great business mind. She's always thinking of what she can do with business. And Shelly was great with interior design. She has a great design eye. And we were just all friends. And it was before Pinterest, but everybody had blogs. And so, you know, there's a food blog and there's a craft blog and there's all these fantastic, amazing ideas out there. And I just wanted one place where we could share, you know, link to all these different yeah. fabulous ideas. Just 
anyway, it's kind of like Pinterest before Pinterest was yeah, well, came along, you know? Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You might have been a little yeah. bit smarter yeah. with a different yeah. platform. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's how we started. Wow. So I'm just wanting to share. Um, I was newly at home. It took me forever to graduate from college. I did it a couple classes at a time with kids. And I had f graduated finally and realized I needed something more than being at home. And um, so I started reading blogs and I thought, oh my gosh, I can write. I don't know how to do this. And then I thought, oh, I can make money. So pretty quickly I monetized and it's been great. How on earth did you guys go from I decided to write something to tens and tens of thousands of people are reading your stuff? Help me, because I'm sure Jordan there's a lot of people on watching. It in that she decided to be genuine. I just want to be their, their friend and be respected by them and let them know that we're in this together and that it's, it's a relatable thing. And, and I know personally that everyone here is like that. And I think that's why we find a lot of joy in what we do. So yeah, I'm hearing that sort of from all of you is ultimately, if you're going to write all the time, you've got to be passionate about what it is. Yes? Yeah. Agree? Yes. Agree? Agree? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because I know there's a lot of women watching going, okay, fine, I want to write something, but how do I build a following? I only have 10 people. I've called all my cousins. What's next? <laughs> no, you know? There's some real strategy involved, though. I mean, there was a small group, really, of way back in the day, and I even started late for the OG bloggers, but um, it was like commenting on other people's blogs and talking on Twitter to other people, and so people start to find you that way, and you find other people that way, and I meet a lot of really close Cross -pollination. friends. Cross-pollination. I think one of the biggest things is kind of like what you touched on is everyone's looking to connect somewhere and our world has changed. It used to be connecting with your neighbors at a block party and now it's, it's very heavily connecting online and people want to make that connection and whatever it is that makes them feel good or uh, you know, if, if it's relating or whatever, they want, they are looking, they're looking for people that have things. And so we pretty heavily use certain keywords to help people to be able to find us when they're searching on Google and such. So for people watching that go, yeah, so if I do this, like what's the financial benefit? How long do I have to wait? The first couple of weeks, you know, we each made our little investment of $150 to set up our blog, wow. get our domain. <laughs> and, our, you know, we're thinking, uh, we might have just thrown away $150. <laughs> I could have bought diapers. But, <laughs> but then, you know, we get our first, I can't remember what it was, some affiliate thing that we signed up for. And I remember that first time we had, like, money come in when we weren't even at our computers. We just went back and checked. We're like, ah, oh, we just made, like, $10. <laughs> and that just slowly grows. I mean, the more you're out there, the bigger audience, the more affiliates. I mean, it all just kind of multiplied from there. But speaking candidly, like I just work a couple hours a week and pull in a solid six figures. But it took me a long time to get there. Now people start it as a business and that's different. I feel like it's yeah, harder to make money when you it. start it as a business. Right. Ours was like, that was a bonus. That, that wasn't what drove us initially, which is why we hung through the hard time because it is hard. It is a grind. Yeah. I know these women. I've met them all before. They all have excellent content and that's what people are looking for. They want really good content. And if you give that to them, they're going to keep coming back for more. It's whatever works for each person. Yes. Like you have to do whatever works for you in your own home and that you feel good about and that you feel fulfilled in doing because it can get monotonous where you feel like you're pumping things out or whatever, but you have to just keep it fresh and what works for you. Good morning. <laughs> Okay, now we're in crunch time. Feeding the baby real fast, feeding the kids. I picked up Beck and Priya from their friend's houses on the way, and it's hitting me how tired I am. I'm gonna switch out the laundry again. Gotta keep it rolling. To finish out the night, we're working on our computers, eating chips and salsa on the couch. Where does the blogger stop and the mom begin, and how do you guys navigate that? Because I know that um, like my wife can multitask, like it hurts my head to, to watch the different things that she can do. But that may be why mom blogger came to be because women are very good at multitasking. That's true. So That's true. they can do a blog and take care There's of the There's no kids. such thing as couch potato sports blogger. There might be, but I just, <laughs> there not I just don't follow it's, anybody. It's certainly not. For me, I've got five kids, six, well, my oldest just turned seven like a couple weeks ago. So five kids, seven and under. And we're not done having okay, kids yet. First of all, God blogger. bless you. Period. I know. <laughs> okay. I'm really glad to be here. Definition I'm of super blogger. glad to not be at home right now. Um, it's like a daycare, but I, I need to start charging. I really do. Um, so it's hard for me because I work 
while they're napping, while I'm brushing my teeth, while I'm going to bed to the bathroom. I mean, I'm a stay-at-home mom. In the early days, it was like blog until three in the morning, sure. and then, yeah, and the, as they've gotten older, I've been able to say, okay, my son comes home from school, I close the laptop, I'm done for the night. But then I'm at swim practice, like exactly. on Facebook, and it yeah. Never ends. But I have to. I've had to be more careful. The longer I've done this, the more careful I've been, because it will take. You could blog 24 hours a day. 365 days a year and it would never be enough. But then it evolves over right. time. And now I've incorporated my family into it. Like my daughter and my daughter and my daughter. <laughs> They're like, they all great work. Thanks. Yeah, that's true. Thanks. So the lines yes. have really been blurry. Yes, I will post that picture for you, Mom. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Like, what, what is this like for your kids? Your kids Ours, are clearly well fed. Their they're, right. they're <laughs> business can't ever become more important than my family is. Mm. And so I'm constantly asking myself, is this really going to matter in 100 years? And of course, providing for our family mm -hmm. does matter because this yeah. is a really good income for us. But they matter. And so I try to be really mindful of when I am working and when they're home, mom is mom. Have you ever had that moment where you did make that decision in the moment, right, to do the, the post or whatever, and you missed out on something that your kid wanted or whatever, and you kind of regretted it, you're nodding your head. Yeah, of course. I missed my daughter's first orchestra concert because I was on a business trip. And then the older my kids have gotten, the more I realize it's gone in a second. So oh, you miss that stuff, so it's fun. gone. Yeah. I was like, okay, how can I take what I'm doing already and work it into my business? So I started putting vlogs up once in a while, where all I'm doing is going around documenting our day, and those are gonna be treasures to me. I'm not filming them for anyone else. Then by throwing it up on YouTube and then on my, on my blog, then it brings in money. So I don't know, I kind of, it's hard, but yeah. I'm sure with your recipes too, it's like, well, yeah, we we're gonna together. eat as a family anyway. Am I, just I think my kids are much better off because I'm so much happier doing what I'm doing <laughs> now yeah. than Holiday I was at my own nine to five job. How do so. your, how do your, Missy, how does your husband handle all this? Oh, he's, he's great. He loves yeah. it. Yeah, he's yeah. been super supportive. It's been a lot of personal revelation for me, um, just really getting mm. a relationship, drawing me closer to God and wanting to know what he wants for me. Obviously, I'm there for my kids and I'm mom first, but I think sometimes people are, you know, called for other purposes too. And, yeah. I, and I feel like Absolutely. I've been drawn that way too. Speaking of family, do you hang out with other vloggers or or is it more like electronic a, communication? Could I find you all at a TGI Fridays on a, in a dark <laughs> corner on a Thursday night? Yeah. Like, I like that idea. My, the early years of my blog were going to conferences with other women, yeah, staying in a hotel with it. It was like a, a slumber a party yeah. for <laughs> the whole conference. I'm serious. Dream. They're awesome. And that's how I've made some of my best friends is they are bloggers. And, and then we're like having Christmas parties together with all of our husbands and we become kind of a community. And we support each other's projects because yes. yeah. we're always yeah, yeah. trying to promote new things and try new things. And then we as friends will, you know, promote it on our social media platform and we help each other. But there's also yeah. bloggers just automatically connect because it's a different world we and it's it. hard. We yeah. get it. And go. immediately connect. And luckily living in Utah is a gift because this is like the mommy blogger capital of the world. A lot of, a lot of us started here and have been here. So there's lots of opportunities to network and it's like we need it. And, and industry is in the we water, right? We are industrious people. That's, That's right. Yes. You're, the, you're the blogging <laughs> beehives. That's right. In Jewish households, every Friday night is read this thing, which is called The Good Wife, but it's literally just out of Proverbs 31. He's talking about, you know, she's keeping her kids warm in the winter and she's industrious and her husband is exalted in the land and all this stuff. And you're like, okay, no pressure, <laughs> right? But it sets an ideal. So it strikes me that that's exactly what you guys are doing. Um, it's just you're doing the, the modern version of that, right? Uh, in your own way. How does your faith weave into this? Because you guys are all people of faith, so your blogs are gonna be different than people that are not. And I'm just curious to, to know a little bit deeper about how that works. When we were given this opportunity to have the blog turn into a business, um, we felt quite certain that if you're given a platform, you need to do good things with it. Every pregnancy that I have, um, I have this thing called hyperemesis, and I get really, really ill, and I'm hospitalized. And during one of my pregnancies, I had this moment where I was laying in a hospital bed, 
and I had just hit 80 pounds, so there wasn't a ton to me anymore. I had this moment of feeling like either I can be really consumed by what I'm going through or I can look for something good every day. And if I can find something good every day, then I can survive and my baby can survive. I was discharged like a day or two later and I came home and I had this moment where I was laying on the couch and my husband was in the kitchen with our children and he was making crepes with them and he told them that at first the batter is really gross and gooey and everything and then you put it in this hot pan and the batter has no idea that it's going to become something awesome and you're going to fill it with Nutella and berries and all these wonderful things but it takes the heat in order to make something great. And he said, that's like what mommy's going through right now. Mm. She's mm. going through something really hard, but it's just going to make us really good. And I knew that this blog wasn't going to be about the food for us. It was going to be about the good things. In everything that we do, we, we feel strongly that we're given a platform and we need to share good things through it. Wow, that's amazing. My blog was born out of a trial of my faith. I hit my 40s and I just decided I wanted something more. I wanted something better. And I actually battled alcoholism in my 40s. Coming out the other side of that, I knew I had to share and pay forward for the people that helped me. Being able to share that with people all around the world, people of all different faiths, because we all suffer from this human condition in that we're not perfect. We're all gonna go through something hard. And when you know that someone else is going through something hard as well, you don't feel alone. I feel like that's why I have the platform that I do. It's so I can share, I've gone through hard things, people can share what they've gone through and we can all help each other. Mm, amazing. I feel like the more we brought in things of more inspiration, things of more depth, you know, started talking about harder issues and be able to relate with what other women are going through, I feel like that's when I, at least I've gotten my most fulfillment from the blog and I also feel like, you know, people started connecting with us more. I love being able to maybe be an answer to someone's prayer or just getting content out mm. there that, that can inspire yeah. and, and help somebody. I don't know, I just think everything in my life is, radiates out from a place of faith. Yes. And so yes. even right now I'm talking a lot about refugees because my husband is a refugee. And so I'm talking about that in a relatable way, in a, you know, this is everyone's family kind of way. And, and that really comes from a place of faith of like, I don't usually talk about refugees on my blog, but if I put that out there, is that okay? And I feel like, all right, yeah. at this time and place, this is what I'm supposed to be talking about once in a while. I've always felt like the difference between people of faith and people that don't have a particular faith like that is just that, we have the same struggles. Faith is our tool to deal with it. Like that's how we confront it. But we all have the struggles. We're not Everyone. perfect, right? Everyone, Everyone has something. Right? So I love the fact that you guys kind of feel comfortable to let those imperfections hang out because it makes you real to your readers, right? Yeah. And if we can put something forward, then other people get brave the, enough to yeah. share theirs. Yeah, that's a huge yes. thing, I yep. think. Just knowing that somebody else has five kids and is changing diapers every 15 seconds and is getting up five times a night and has five. that, oh, that'd be yeah, good right? night. and has that <laughs> one kid night. that just will not take no yeah. for an answer, will not fall on, that, that knowing that somebody else is going through that, that helps you, right? It does. I mean, yeah. It gives you this empowerment that it's like, okay, we're going through this together and we can do this and I'll empower you and you can empower me and I'm not gonna hide where my faith lies in this. And that's, that's a big underlying factor, I think. I love that, and if you could all tell me, starting, starting with what you're saying, something that you believe very strongly that you believe will bless other people as well. I believe that being a mother is a very powerful position. Mm. I think the world today tries to tell us otherwise. I think there is no greater role on earth than we were talking about this earlier, then raising this army of just like little rad people that are gonna go out in the world and just <laughs> That needs to kick be a t-shirt, little you know? rad people, yes. seriously. I'm Hashtag it, people. I'm going that to. Is you awesome. will see a trucker hat with that in a week, I, I promise. I, okay, but I, I know want people. one. I will <laughs> get it to you. Okay. But at the end of the day, I believe in motherhood and I believe that it matters. Mm. Can we all just like- Can we all just say amen, oh, yeah. right? Amen. Yeah. I believe that we are all a lot more alike than we are different yeah. because my blog. Can we fist bump on that? 
Okay. Bam. That's another. Yeah. We need to make that shirt too. That is another t-shirt. Let's start the pressure. Yeah. Because my blog literally goes throughout the world. Like one of my favorite things to do is when the email goes out, you can watch a map and see where uh -huh. it's being opened all around the world, oh, which is really cool. cool. And it's literally around the world. But we all come from the same human experience. We all go through something and we can help each other through anything. Man, this is like the table of wisdom. <laughs> Working, being an entrepreneur, being a writer, being a blogger has taught me is that I am enough. And that is a pretty big deal when you're a woman to feel like you're enough. You're as a mom, you're enough. As a whatever, you're enough. That's, that's a pretty big thing. I think that we need to start a t-shirt and bumper sticker <laughs> company. I know some people. Okay, <laughs> because <laughs> it's going to come out of the show. I just want, you know, 5%. I think but. mine kind of goes along with that, but just knowing maybe your purpose. And it's always evolving. It's not always the same mm. thing. That's everything to me. And I think everybody could benefit from that. In our home, we, we try to often emphasize that I'm the daughter of God, and that is enough. I don't have to be anything else. And that being a mom is important. I tell my children that often and having a relationship with my father and you are who you're supposed to be. Nothing else, nothing else matters because you can do good things with that. Well, you are all amazing. It's so inspiring for me to watch all of you guys do what you're doing. It's really something and we just need to come up with another term besides mom blogger. <sighs> we'll, and when we, when we figure that we out, we will post it, it under, yes, we will, we will, we will turn it into a trucker hat. <laughs> we will turn it into a trucker hat. Power Thank yeah. Huh? Ooh, power power bloggers. bloggers. Ooh, okay, let's all, let's, like let's do like a Knights of the Round Table. Hi guys, I just had an incredible conversation with a group of women who came in as mom bloggers, but we decided now we're gonna call them power bloggers. Much better. And if you thought that was great, check out the next episode of Frankly Farachi. I'm really happy to be here tonight with somebody very special I wanna introduce you to. So we're gonna to learn together about propaganda. So from the soil that grew in Jim Morrison, Tony Hawk, N.W.A., Snoop, and Kendrick Lamar grows another L.A. native propaganda. Your agenda, as I see it, is to speak like to speak positive, to speak good into the world. Yes, I'm not the artist; I'm the canvas. Like, and your recognition comes from there. Comes from not up. from out there. Yep.